All right, closing your eyes, resting your hands on your knees, sit up tall. And wash your breath through your whole core from the crown of your head right down to the tailbone and your sit bones. Let's call that the core today. And begin to create space in your whole core. So relaxing the jaw and the neck. Let your shoulders rest on your back. And as you breathe, expand your ribs. You might feel yourself sitting up a little bit taller with each new inhale. And feel your sit bones and your tailbone and allow your body to receive the support of the earth. So feel if you're like lifted up, can you relax down, snuggle into the earth beneath your sit bones. We'll use our practice today to create a more spacious home for our spirit to live in. So however you might define spirit today, you might access a feeling of your own energy, your own state of being. How are you right now? You might have some other definition of spirit, but mostly creating space. That's something we can all access. So take three more breaths here. Great. Open your eyes, change the cross of your legs. If you're seated with one leg in front, just bring the awkward leg in front, it might feel weird. Take your hands, send them out to the sides for a wrist stretch. Inhale, spread open the palms right out through each of the fingers. Relax your shoulders down. And then exhale, bring one finger at a time, fan out the fingers and curl them into a fist and roll the knuckles down. Relax your jaw. Feel the stretch in your wrist, left to right. Turn your palms face and forward now. Inhale, spread out the bones of your hands. Exhale the thumb in, the fingers around the thumb, light squeeze on that thumb, tick-tock the hands out, relax your shoulders down, open your neck and your jaw. Good, let's go back to the first one. Inhale, spread the bones of your hands out. Exhale one finger at a time into a fist, roll the knuckles down. Turn your palms, face them forward, inhale. Exhale the thumb in, the fingers around the thumb, light squeeze there. And send the wrists out like you're pouring two pitchers of water and get a little stretch along the line where your wrist meets the thumb. And then relax that and send your legs out in front of you. And then bring your right foot in, right hand behind you. Inhale the left arm up. Exhale, bring the arm around the front of the shin, relax your shoulders down. Inhale to grow your spine tall. Use your exhale to twist. And do that one more time, just like that. Inhale. And exhale. Let's go into a side bend. Take that knee out to the side. So keeping the right knee bent and then opening up greater than 90 degrees. Walk your left hand down the inside of the leg. Take your right arm, reach it up and over into the side bend, keeping the chest open. So even as you're reaching that arm up by your ear, you're not caving the chest towards the earth. Open it up, relax right shoulder down away from your ear. You can let your head hang. You might support your neck. This could be good, the elbow on the leg or on a block. Take a couple breaths here feeling for getting even more breath to come into the right side of your body. Expanding your ribs, expanding the side body. Slow, steady breath. And now take the top arm and you can choose this chest and heart opening move so the palm faces straight ahead and you might let your heart open that way. You can follow the gaze upward or it may just feel best to look down. 
Your other option is to take the arm around behind the back. Find out what feels better to you. And we'll take three breaths here. Three long, full breaths. So that might be more than three of your breath. Continue to lengthen and stretch out your breath as you move through your practice. And you can breathe in and out through your nose, or you might try breathing in through your nose and out through the mouth if that feels more supportive to you. You might lengthen out the exhale in some way that can be very relaxing and relieving of stress. Longer exhale tends to be more down regulating. All right, come out of that. You're nice and easy making your way up and come into your twist. Bring your left foot in, stretch the right leg out. Left hand behind you, inhale the right arm up and exhale. Come around the front of the shin, relax your shoulders down, relax your jaw. Feel that long, steady inhale. Maybe an even longer exhale to twist. Use your inhale to lengthen the spine and use your exhale to create the twist. So you literally twist into the space that you just created on the inhale. And release. Come out of that, <clears throat> open up the knee, and come into your side bend. Walk right hand down, reach that left arm up, open up the chest and the heart, relax your shoulders down. You can let your head hang or support the head with the bottom hand. Do what feels best to you today. Really honor every day is different. And how's your body today? How's your body moment to moment? It's a great opportunity to meet yourself where you are, following your breath. Take another deep inhale into the left ribs and expand there. And use a full exhale to soften, feeling your sit bones, your extended leg, everything supported by the earth. And now reach the top arm into either chest opener or the arm around behind the back. Play with that for yourself. And slow, steady breaths. And beginning to feel more deeply inside. That's the practice. We move inward. All right, release. Come on up. And let's make our way to all fours. Coming into a cat stretch. Mm. Supporting your body, your knees hip distance apart, your hands shoulder distance, and moving your cat around. Let's open up the shoulders, the length of the spine. Move any way that feels good to you. And come into downward facing dog. And in this downward dog, you're gonna bend one knee and then the other. Then walk it out a little bit. Feel for opening up the bottoms of each of your feet and the hamstrings, the backs of the legs. Feeling the muscles of your arms turn on. And then slowly walk your feet up to where your hands are. And let's hang forward here, soften through the knees to protect the hamstrings. Clasp your hands behind your back and then roll open the shoulders.
Shake your head out, yes and no. And then release the arms to the floor and slowly roll your way up to stand. We'll take a few sun salutations to get the body moving. And moving at your own pace, inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Take the right knee back and put it down on the mat. And inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, put the right hand down on the mat. Line up your left knee over your right, your left heel. <laughs> and open up the chest. Draw the arms away from the ears. Spread your chest and collarbones open. Then exhale your hand to the mat. Step back to plank. Bring your knees down. Then slowly lower down. Low cobra, your hands about 10 inches in front of your chest. Pull your chest and your heart forward. Exhale, come down and back to downward facing dog. Now step your right foot forward between your hands. Inhale your arms up. And then exhale, come into that twist. Left hand down, right knee over the heel. Twist open. Exhale the hands down. Step up to the front of the mat and inhale, right breath come up. Exhale, hands to your heart. One more like that. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold forward. Take your left foot back and keep the knee up this time. Keep your fingertips down on the floor. You're, you can come up onto the fingertips and lower the hips towards the earth. Turn on your back leg. Long spine. In this runner's lunge, you want to feel the whole length of your spine and your core turn on. Take a breath here, feeling the hips descend towards the mat. And at the same time, your left thigh bone is lifting up towards the sky. So there's a real dynamic here. It's a strong pose, a lot of muscular effort and turn on in the legs. Keep all of that. Left hand stays down. Take the right arm up into your twist. Now bring the hand down and step right back into plank. Legs stay turned on. You can bring the knees down or not. Lower down from here. Low cobra. Inhale. Draw your chest forward. Open up the heart. Exhale down and back to downward facing dog. Now step your left foot forward. And let's create that strong runner's lunge again. Lower the hips, turn on the back leg. Draw your left hip a little more back than the right, so you square off your hips. You saw how my hip, I can really wing it forward. So pulling the left hip a little back, the right hip forward, pull the belly in, lengthen your spine, draw your chest forward. Take another breath here. And exhale, pull the belly in and up. Come down onto the right hand, now rotate open. So your core is active, the legs are strong, open chest and heart. And release the hand down. You're gonna step up to the front of the mat and then bend the knees, have a seat and lay back. We're gonna do some abdominal work to continue our warm up. <clears throat> All right, lay down on your back, bring your feet up. <clears throat> Clasp your hands behind your head. If you have a tender lower back today, feel free to work this, keeping the feet down. And if you work this variation, you lift a thigh bone up. That's the only thing you do. Lift the thigh bone up and twist towards it. Otherwise, with the feet up, you'll be extending a leg. Clasp the hands behind your head. Inhale, head and shoulder blades up. Press the lower back into the mat and curl just the tailbone up. Exhale, twist to the right. Straighten your left leg, pull the lower belly down. Inhale, come back to center. Breathe into your lower back, curl the tailbone up. Exhale, twist to the left, straighten the right leg, pull the belly down. Inhale, come back to center. Breathe into lower back, curl the tailbone up. Exhale, twist to the right, straighten the left leg, pull the belly down. Inhale, come back to center. Breathing into your lower back, curl the tailbone up. Exhale, twist to the left, straighten your right leg, pull the belly down. Inhale, back to center. Press lower back into the mat, curl the tailbone up. 
Exhale, twist to the right, straighten the left leg, pull the belly down. Inhale, come back to center, breathe into lower back, curl the tailbone up. Exhale, twist left, straighten right. Inhale, come back to center, press lower back down, curl tailbone up. Exhale, twist right, straighten the left leg, pull belly down. Inhale, come back to center, press the lower back down, curl the tailbone up. Exhale, twist to the left, straighten the right leg, pull the belly down. Come back to center, hug your knees into your chest. And we're gonna roll forward and back. If that feels good on your body, you might not feel like you wanna do this. You can just roll to the side. This is how we come up. We're gonna come up, have a little fun, come up onto your feet and you'll stand up again. And we're gonna move into some standing poses. All right, stepping up to the front of your mat if you're not there already. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold forward. Take the right foot back, keep the knee up, and inhale the arms up over your head. Hands down, step back to plank, slowly lower down. Low cobra, inhale. Exhale back to downward dog. Step your right foot forward between your hands. Keep the back knee up. Inhale, come up. Exhale, hands down. Step up to the front of your mat. Inhale, come up. Hands to your heart. One more like that. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold forward. Take the left foot back. Inhale, reach the arms up. Bring the hands down, step back to plank. Slowly lower down. Low cobra. Exhale back to downward facing dog. Step the left foot forward. Bring the arms up, inhale. Exhale, hands down. Step up to the front of your mat. And inhale, come all the way up, reach up. Exhale, hands to your heart. Chair pose. Bend your knees, lower your hips, shifting your weight back to the heels. Let's stay here for a couple breaths. Shift your weight to the heels so much that you can lift your toes up and your feet can be hip distance apart. And maybe sit down a little deeper and lengthen the tailbone slightly down. Lift the heart a little bit higher. Take another breath here. And exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Step back to plank. We're going to add in upward facing dog. If you want, if you want to stay with Cobra, please do. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale back to downward dog. Let's turn on the abs a little bit more. Take your right leg, reach it up and back. Keep firmly pressing into both of your hands. Exhale, hug the knee into the chest, pull the belly and press the earth away. Inhale, reach back. Exhale, hug the knee straight into the chest, press the earth away. So you're wrapping your shoulders, turning on your core. Inhale, reach back. Exhale, curl. Now place the foot between the hands and come into warrior two. This will be warrior two with archer arms. Your right elbow is up, left elbow down. So you're patting yourself on the back with the right hand and you can drop a strap or a towel and grab that or you could just grab clothing. You don't have to have the fingers meet. In fact, if that feels stressful at all, don't do it. Even if your hands do come together, if it tightens anywhere, don't do it. Now sink into your warrior two. And feel. Feel the whole length of your core from the crown of your head right down to your sit bones and your tailbone. Can you turn on your left leg, press into the outer edge of your left foot. That foot can be turned on an angle or straight ahead at the 90 degree angle. Your right foot is pointing towards the small end of your mat. And your front heel intersects the arch of your back foot or the back heel. Really that's 
up to your comfort in your hips. Breathe in a way that lengthens your spine for two more breaths. Release the arms, inhale, reach out, and exhale into reverse warrior. Your hand could go down the back leg or maybe supporting the lower back feels better. You want to lengthen up your right hip away from the right thigh. So this little spot, you could even put your right hand there and just lift that right hip bone up a little bit and feel if you get a little decongestion there. And then expanding the right ribs into this side bend. You might for your neck look down. You never have to strain to look up. It's really more of an inward gaze that you want to focus on. So your eyes, they could look down or maybe you even close your eyes. Now use that top arm to help you come up, straighten the front leg. You'll bring the feet a little closer together and we'll come into triangle pose, trikonasana. Put the right hand onto the right shin or onto a block. And then relax the shoulders away from the ears. Spread the chest and the collarbones. You can take that top arm, reach it up. You can lean your heart even more open by taking another chest opener here. Your gaze could go with it or it might feel better. I know it does for me to just look down. Your raw shoulders down. Really press forward to the ball of the right foot and lift your right shin up to meet the hand. And deepen your breath. All right, from here, you'll bring your hands down to the mat, step back to plank. We'll come through either cobra or upward facing dog. And back to downward dog. Warrior two with archer arms, step your left foot forward between your hands. Bring the left arm up, pat yourself on the back. And make that bind happen, finding ease in the upper back and the shoulders. So as you relax your jaw, you can also settle into your strong legs. And relaxing the shoulders down so that you can really receive the breath in this area that so many of us get so tight in the upper back and the shoulders. Feel how this is for you and what do you need to do to create more space in there? Reverse warrior, release the arms, inhale, expand out and exhale. Hand goes down the leg or to support the lower back, and you lengthen and arch back. Really turn on your right leg. Lift your right kneecap up and press into the outer edge of your right heel. And then you can deepen into your left knee a little bit deeper. Inhale, come up, straighten the front leg. You can adjust the feet, left hand onto left shin. And open the chest as you go, you might turn your gaze up or let your head hang.
release, put your hands down. Let's come all the way down onto the belly for boat or shalabhasana. So you're laying flat, arms by the side, palms facing up. Lift the feet, the hands, the heart, come up. And exhale, back to downward facing dog. From Downward Dog, step your right foot forward into Warrior One. So in Warrior One, you're gonna align your hips to the short end of your mat, deepen the bend in the front knee. Clasp your hands behind your back. We're gonna stay here, reaching the knuckles down towards the earth. Now, you don't wanna jam, see how I'm jamming in my lower back like that? You wanna lift up and lengthen. How you achieve that, press more into the outer edge of the back foot, draw the lower belly in, send the shoulders down and open your chest. And then you can open the throat, maybe the gaze goes slightly up or down, looking towards the tip of your nose, that could feel healthy for your neck. The gaze at the nose can support a little better than rolling the eyes back, it tends to strain the neck. And deepen your breath. And feel if you can bring breath all the way up to chest and heart. Release out of that. Inhale, reach your arms up. And let's twist. Take the left elbow to the right thigh. Now, I mean, you might want to pick the back heel up you might want to put the back knee down. Those are options. Or you can stay in this warrior stance and twist. Do what feels best on your body. Find any variation that will feel the best to get an inhale to lengthen and exhale to twist even deeper. All right, release your hands down. Put the back knee down and pad the knee. Lunge, bringing the heel into the butt. This is a quad stretch. If this is challenging for your body to do with the knee down, you can always stand up and balance on your right leg and bring the left heel in towards the butt and get a quad stretch that way. If you're down in the lunge, opening up, the chest and the heart like we did in the first pose of this sequence. You're lifting the chest and the heart. Maybe the gaze slightly shifts up to open up the throat. So you're really feeling into fifth chakra, that's the throat chakra, and fourth chakra, that's the heart chakra, this whole area. Can you allow that area to soften and receive the breath? So you're feeding your heart as much as you are opening it. You need to do both. And the connection of the, the throat, our voice, our truth connected to the heart. All right, release out of that. We're going to come down onto the belly again. And this time, reach back and clasp your hands behind your back. Feel this chest opener. Shoulders away from the ears. Lift the feet. Lift the hands. Lift the heart. Come up. Release. Press back. Downward facing dog. All right, step the left foot forward between the hands. You're going to come into warrior one and clasp your hands behind your back. Draw the shoulders down. So like you did just a moment ago, laying on the belly, you're drawing the belly in and your spine's lengthening upward. Feel that it's a similar shape. It works differently though, because we have the power to lean really far back. When you're laying on your belly, you can't do that as much. So here you really have to resist the urge to lean so far back. And instead, 
Strengthen the muscles that go up along the spine and lift and open up the heart and the throat. And breathe here. Releasing out of that, back knee. Oh no, we go into a twist first. Let's go into the twist. Take your right arm. Don't want to miss that twist. Bring your right elbow to the left thigh. As you deepen into this, feeling for how your inhale creates space. And your twist happens on the exhale. You have a little more room to move. All right, now we bring the back knee down and pat it. Quad stretch. I've noticed Recently, one of my longtime students now practices here with the left hand on the heart. So she's always putting a hand on the heart and it feels so reverent. So you might want to try that. Our own touch can be very soothing. And also you can actually call your breath here because touch is the language of the body. So you might breathe towards your hand. All right, release. We'll come down onto your belly. We'll go into Dhanurasana. Bend your knees, grab a hold of your feet, your ankles. Kick back, open the chest. And release. Let's take a breath here. Just lay flat, rest your forehead on your arms and take a moment. Feeling the length of your spine, feel your breath. And we'll move into our last standing pose series. Come into downward facing dog. <clears throat> you know what? I forgot that whole thing. We're going to do it on the left side because I just remembered it. <laughs> left leg's going to go up. Don't hate me. Exhale, hug the knee into the chest, press the floor away from you, wrap your shoulders. Inhale, reach back. Exhale, pull in. Inhale, reach back. Exhale, hug in. Okay, turn on the core. Now let's step the right foot forward into warrior two. All right, warrior two with the right foot forward. Put the right forearm onto the thigh. Take your top arm, you're gonna reach it open and you can take that arm around. So you could do chest opening here. You might find that you have a little more availability, a little more opening now, the end of our practice to come into the bind or any part of this bind. So feel how you're opening up your chest here. Opening up the heart, relying on the strength and power of your legs. So if your forearm is on the thigh, be light on that arm. All right, release out of that. Now bring your back knee down. We're going into lounge lunge. So in this loungy lunge, you get to sink your hips, walk your left hand forward, so the hand isn't just underneath your shoulder, you're gonna walk it forward and slightly out to the left of the mat. So your left ribs can move towards that hand. And then your right arm, you get to 
maybe take your right hand to the left foot and hold on to it. This can be a nice chest opener. I'll show you a different view in a minute. You'll come into this like this, opening up the chest and the heart. If that doesn't work for you, notice how I rolled onto the outer edge of my, maybe you can't see my foot. Um, I rolled onto the outer edge of my right foot. That is always an option. You could be right here. Your right hand's gonna go onto the right hip. So you're here, opening up. That feels really good to me today. I'm like pressing down and out on that right thigh bone. All right, from there, we're gonna go into pigeon back bend. So not the yummy forward foldy pigeon, although if that is the best thing for your body to do right now, do it. But we're gonna continue with a few more back bends. So I'm gonna encourage you to do a back bendy pigeon. So you're up a little bit higher in this pigeon. You might slide a block underneath your right hip or use a bolster or a blanket, never any pain in your knees. You could do this as a lunge as well. And you walk your hands back. If you can reach the floor, great, or use blocks. So you can be up here or put your hands on your lower back and open up the chest. So you've got some options. Pick one that works. And then ease on out of that. Step back, come down, and you'll do one more down your asana. Hold on to the ankles, open up the chest and the heart. Press on back to downward facing dog. Step your left foot forward, come into warrior two. Forearm on the thigh, right arm around behind the back. You could stay there or maybe feeling a little more spacious. Your left hand could come down and you could bind. All right, from here, we go into that lounge lunge. Your back knee comes down. You walk the right hand forward and out to the right. Lounge your right ribs. And maybe you take a hip opening position. So, you back up a little bit. Here, here, or here. All right, releasing out of that, coming into pigeon, back bend. And locking the hands back by the side, opening up the chest. All right, release. Let's go into camel pose next. 
Hands on the lower back, your knees. Maybe you need to pad your knees, that's up to you. Have them be hip distance apart. Hands on the lower back. Push pelvis forward as you lengthen the sacrum downward. Lower back should feel free. Heart open, throat open. You only lean back once you've really lengthened upward through the spine because otherwise you'll jam your lower back. And your hands can stay right where they are or if they can move easily to your heels in one motion, not like one side and then the other. You don't want to strain. It should feel really easy. Notice um, my voice changed a little bit, but I can still breathe and it feels good in my neck. If you went back, come up slow, put your hands on your lower back and come up. All right, we're gonna finish with either wheel or bridge. So you'll come down onto your mat and come into bridge first. So you're laying down, you're gonna lift up to here. You can walk your shoulders underneath, clasp the hand. And you got five to 10 breaths. Notice how bridge is similar to the last two backbends that we've done. We did camel kneeling and we were on the belly. So if you flipped this upside down and grabbed onto your ankles, you'd be in Dhanurasana. So come down, keep your feet on the mat and knock the knees in towards each other and feel how that spread open your sacrum and take a couple breaths right here. You have the option for your next posture to do any of the back bends that we've already done. You could go back to camel, you could flip over on your belly, you could do bridge. If you would like to go in the wheel, I'll be going into wheel and I'll talk you in. Otherwise, five to 10 breaths, back bend of your choice. Enjoy this moment. You've been building up to this. So here you are, you're gonna push down into your heels Inhale into your chest, bring your hands by your shoulders, and exhale, press up. You can see your index fingers, you want to line them parallel. And let your head hang, relax your neck, strongly press into your feet. Five to ten breaths. Slowly come down. And let's take a moment from wherever you are, be on your back, and we'll do a back release pose. So you're laying on your back, your knees are bent, soles of feet on the floor. Press your hands into your thighs and push your thighs away so you just traction out your back. And then you can feel how if you turn your tailbone towards the earth and round the lower back, if that feels good, or does it feel good to flatten the back into the mat? You can just keep a neutral spine, do that. From here, cross your right ankle over the left knee, reach around, grab a hold of the shin or the back of the thigh and hug in. You can use your right elbow in the crook of that right thigh to press the leg away as you pull the shin in. And you breathe into your back here.
release out of that. Cross the left foot over the right thigh and hug in here. Grab wherever feels good. You can take left elbow into the left thigh and press out. Release, soles of the feet together this time. Take a hold of the outer edges of your feet and bring the feet straight down towards your chest. So in this variation, it feels easier to bring the heels towards your butt, but you get less stretch in the lower back. So feel how this is. If you bring the feet more towards your face or towards your chest, and then the lower back lifts up and you get to breathe in there. Feel that? If this doesn't feel good, happy baby is just fine as well. And then release and roll to your side and come on up to sit. Extend your legs out in front of you. Bring your right foot in. We're gonna start with a forward fold and a bind. So for this one, you'll bring your right arm forward. You might take a strap or a towel. This is my right hand. I'm gonna reach around the right shin. Take that strap or towel, throw it on back there. Grab a hold of it or maybe your hands meet. Relax the right shoulder. Send your chest forward. Exhale here, letting your head hang. Relax your shoulders and breathe into your back. And then slowly come on up, release the hands, and we'll go to the second side. Bring the left foot in. Inhale your left arm forward and around. Grab a hold of the hands, draw the shoulders down, lift the chest, and exhale, fold forward. All right, release out of that. Let's come into Baddha Konasana. Bring the soles of your feet together. And you can create more space for your body, bringing the feet further away from you if you need that. And then walking the hands forward, any amount coming into a forward fold in this position. You might use a block, putting a block up on the feet to support your forehead or a bolster. You can slide a bolster right in on top of the feet towards your belly and fold like that. It can be really helpful to have that kind of support for your forehead to rest on.
Okay, coming up, walk your hands in. Now we'll take Upavishta Konasana, the back foot, the legs wide. So you can really sit pretty deep into this and you can move your body forward. Just make sure that you don't overstretch the groin. So if you move yourself into it, you want the groin soft and you can sit up on a blanket. You can also have your knees bent and also bring the legs in closer. You don't have to go to your maximum. Know that we're going to be here. So your maximum will come with time as well. Walk your hands forward, any amount. Keep the knees and the toes pointing straight ahead. Now walk your hands in, come on up. You're gonna to turn to face one leg, whichever leg you choose. Turn to face that leg, and you'll walk your hands out over that extended leg. And from here, turn into a side bend, much like when we started class, it's gonna feel different. And take the top arm, lean it back or bring it around. And then to come up, use your hands to help. So that top arm is going to help lift you up. The bottom arm is going to push you up. Come up, turn and face your extended leg. Keep the knees and the toes pointing straight up. So even when you're facing one leg, remember the other hip is down and that other leg is active. From here, turn sideways, open up the chest. All right, inhale, come on up. Heavy head coming up last. Bring the legs in oh, and give yourself a little hug here. From here, you can lay down on your back. We'll do a three-part series on the back to help release. <clears throat> so lay down. You might want your head on a small blanket or a towel, just to give your head a little bit of a lift and a cushion, but that's entirely up to you. Stretch your left leg long along the mat. 
And we're going to come into half happy baby on the right side. Hold on to the right foot, sole of the foot towards the ceiling. So here you are. If it would feel better, bend the left knee, put the sole of the foot on the floor. If it would feel even better, maybe let your left knee drop out to the side like a Baddha Konasana leg. So now you're in a lower back lengthener, a hip opener. You have a lot of options. Feel what feels best to you today and for what we're working on. Right now, it might feel best to have the legs straight and along the floor. Remember, you can always do that. And slowing down your breath. You might use an eye pillow across your eyes, some kind of a, you know, an actual eye pillow or even just like a rolled up washcloth can be nice or turning off overhead lights. Releasing that foot, you're gonna hug your knee into your chest and take the knee across into a twist. Right, releasing back onto your back and now you'll take your leg into half frog so your right knee the right leg is at a 90 degree angle it's here and you just let it go out to the side the foot can dangle in the air if that feels fine to the foot or you can just let it rest or it might be supportive with your hand underneath it like i've got my hand there i don't really need my hand there but that's entirely up to you you could also slide a bolster or a block underneath that leg. And just take a couple breaths here. And then use your hand to bring the leg back in and stretch it out. And then Take a moment, I love to take a moment here during this to feel left and right. Let your feet just fall naturally out to the sides and then feel what's different about your right hip, the hip we just worked on from the left. All right, let's do the second side. Hug your left knee in and then bring it into half happy baby. You might bend the right knee, let the knee fall out to the side. Do what feels good to you. All right, from here, hug the knee into your chest and then take it across into your twist. All right, from here, you get that open frog leg going out to the side. Support it any way that feels right. And take a few breaths here.
release out of that. Lay flat for a breath, turn the toes out, let the feet fall out. You might end up staying here for Shavasana. But taking a moment here just to feel how both hips are now even and make sure you even out the hips if you're going to stay here. I'm going to suggest that for today's Shavasana, if you have a wall or even a chair or a table that you could put your legs on, that you come into some variation of legs supported above your head. So legs up the wall, you come close to the wall and you turn around and this is Viparita Karani, it's the great rejuvenator. You could be here or you could have your feet on the wall. I mean, your feet on a bed so the knees would be bent or on a chair. 